Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We pray for everyone here tonight that your supernatural power will come upon everyone and you roll all the infirmities and the problems away in Jesus' name. That all things that are negative this year will be totally cancelled in our lives in Jesus' name. For every brother, for every sister, for every young person here, oh Lord, I'm praying. This year will be a year of joy, a year of prosperity, a year of blessing. All the sorrows and regrets of the past, you cancel everything from our lives in Jesus' name. Manifest your mighty power here tonight. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight I want to talk to you on reversing negative prophecies. Reversing negative prophecies. What's a prophecy? A prophecy is a prediction or a foretelling of that which has not happened, but which the person prophesying or predicting or foretelling is sure that it will happen because it is backed up by spiritual power for its fulfillment. If that prophecy is talking about something good, something favorable, something joyful, something that will bring happiness, that's a positive prophecy. If that prophecy is talking about something bad, something terrifying, something destructive, then that is a negative prophecy. Negative prophecy, therefore, is a negative prediction or a negative foretelling that is part up by some spiritual power or some spiritual authority for its fulfillment. Sometimes, the negative prophecy may come as a direct statement. It may come from a person that has spiritual power or spiritual authority, and it may be fastened on your mind, or it may be revealed to you in a dream. And you know that it is something that is negative and terrible and bad and evil. Or it may be that it is uttered through a curse that is pronounced by an enemy that has some dark, black, terrible, destructive spiritual power. But in whichever form it may come, a direct statement, or through a curse, or through a dream, whatever the direction, if it's a negative prophecy, I want to show you tonight how to cancel and how to reverse negative prophecies in your life. But I will show you also from scripture. There are people that took this word nonchalantly. That is, they didn't take it serious. They felt, even, that prophet, even though that prophecy may be negative, they didn't think that there was anything to eat. And eventually, because they did not know how to reverse the negative prophecy, and their lives were destroyed, and their lives became controlled by the virtue of the negative prophecies. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 26. 1 Samuel chapter 26, and in verse 5. And David arose, and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay. And Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench, and the people pitched round about him. Verse 10. David said furthermore, As the Lord liveth, the Lord 
shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. I'm reading to you about King Saul. David and Saul were not in good terms. He hated David. And he was chasing after David. And eventually in the wilderness, David saw him. And one of the servants, one of the followers of David said, Let's smite him, strike him that he may die. And David said, No, don't do it. And then David uttered a negative prophecy, a negative prediction, a negative statement that said, The Lord shall smite him, or he, or he shall descend into battle and shall perish. Maybe Saul heard of that prophecy. Maybe he did not hear of that prophecy, negative prophecy. There are many people today, there are many negative prophecies on their lives, but they never hear. The enemies utter those negative prophecies or negative predictions. And because they do not hear, they do not know there is any danger. Or maybe they hear. And after hearing, they say, well, I don't care about that. I don't worry about that. And then they just go their way. Why didn't Saul worry about such a thing? Maybe because he was a king. And he felt, who can put anything on a king? Who can say anything negative about a king? And he felt, since he had the throne, he had the power, he had the authority. And therefore he did not care. Do you know there are people today, they say, because they are chief. Because they are VIP. Because they are director and manager. They do not worry about any neg negative comments. It may be a servant, it may be a boy, it may be a messenger that uttered the negative prophecy. Oh, they say that's a childish talk. I don't worry about that. Man, you ought to worry about it. You know that's what Saul did? Saul said, I don't worry about it. Or it may be because Saul had known prophet Samuel long, long ago. And because he knew prophet Samuel, he felt, I have a prophet. I used to know that prophet. Whatever anybody says about me, I don't worry, I don't care. Saul should have worried, he should have cared, he should have thought about how to reverse that negative prediction. But he didn't worry. You know, there are people that will say, they have their prophets. And because they had known a prophet who had been praying for them many years ago, any negative thing, they do not think about it. It may be that they hear the negative prediction or the negative prophecy. They don't do anything about it. They just keep quiet. Or it may be that Saul was thinking, do you know there was a time that Saul had a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of character, a change of behavior? He knew the Lord because as he turned to go away from Samuel, the Lord gave him a change of heart. But he had backslidden this time. He was not following the Lord anymore. Bitterness, anger, hatred had come in. Jealousy, envy had come in. Pride had come in. And he had been chasing after David. And because sin had come into his heart, he didn't know the protection of the Lord was not over him anymore. He didn't know the helmet of salvation was not there anymore. He didn't know the hedge around him, the, protection, the protective hedge around him was not there anymore. Do you know there are people like that? They are backsliding. And they will still say, well, I was once saved before. And even though they, are, they have now allowed unforgiving spirit, they have allowed anger, bitterness, animosity, hatred to enter into them, jealousy and envy to enter into them. When they hear of a negative prophecy uttered upon them, they don't care, they don't worry, and they should worry about it. And so Saul did not worry. And it was a negative prophecy that came upon him. What should he have done? He should have reversed it. He should have seen a way of cancelling it. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 31. Before the end of the book, before the book finished, that thing that David had said, a negative prophecy, it came. My brother, my sister, you may sleep at night. And then you have a negative dream. You know what some believers do when they have a negative dream like that? They just laugh. Maybe somebody came to them in a dream and then uttered a negative prediction. Something bad, something terrible, something destructive. Well, they say, I'm a believer. They don't even pray about it. Instead of rising up and pleading the blood of Jesus, instead of rising up and marching in victory, instead of rising up and claiming the promises of God, instead of rising up and talking in faith, they don't pray about it. They say, well, I don't worry. Why are you like Saul? Why, don't you, why are you saying you don't worry? Why don't you cancel it? Why don't you say, anything I bind on earth is found in heaven? 
Anything I lose on earth is lose in heaven. Why are you nonchalant about it? Or it may be that it is revealed to the wife. And the wife will tell the husband. And say, my husband, do you know? I had a terrible dream today. And somebody told me in the dream that this is going to happen. This is going to happen. That's a negative prediction. And you know, sometimes the husband might tell the wife, don't worry about that. That's, uh, you know, we are children of God now. Don't worry about it. Why don't you worry about it? Why don't you take authority? And if two of you shall agree as touching anything, the Lord says, it will answer you. Why don't you join hands with your wife immediately and break that thing, destroy that thing, reverse that negative prediction? Or it may be, do you know, there are times that God will reveal something to a little, little child. Do you know that Joseph was the smallest child in the family? Well, apart from Benjamin. And yet God was revealing something to Joseph. And he rose up in the morning and said, my daddy, look at what God showed me. And then the father just said, what do you mean? Do you mean that your father and your mother and all your senior brothers will come to bow down before you? They didn't take it serious. Do you know my brother, my sister, sometimes it may be a little child. He wakes up in the morning and he said, daddy, or he said, mommy, I had something today. And it was a terrible accident. And this happened and this happened. And we just say, child, sorry, keep quiet. That's what we're telling you. You play too much in the afternoon. My brother, that's not play too much in the afternoon. Because God can reveal himself and warn the family through that little child, that little girl, that little boy. But you know, Saul did not do anything about it. Oh, he just said, well, just forget about it. Forget about it. He was careless. He was nonchalant. But look at what happened. Remember the negative prophecy. The Lord shall smite him. Or his day to die shall come. Or he shall go down to the battle and he shall perish. First Samuel chapter 31 verse 1. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard after Saul and upon his son. Do you see that? Now he had gone into the battle. And the Philistines followed hard after him. They said the number one person we're looking for now is Saul. The number one person we want to destroy is Saul. That's the negative prediction. He never did anything about it when it came out originally. Look at verse 4. And Saul said unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword, and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come, and thrust me through, and abuse me by his armor, but his armor bearer would not. But he was so afraid, for he was so afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword, and fell upon it, but says, so Saul died. Do you see the fulfillment of the negative prediction? Because he didn't worry about the negative prediction or prophecy. If something had been in your life, sometimes you know, God wants us in various ways. You might be in a vehicle, and it flashes in your mind as if there's an accident going to happen. It flashes in your mind as if danger is very near. It flashes in your mind as if the dark power is coming from behind you. It flashes in your mind as if bad luck, ill luck, misfortune, calamity is near. You know there are some believers, they keep on preaching in the bus, even when that thing is following after them. They are not challenged about it, or they keep on singing choruses, and they just say, well, I don't worry. Now I don't worry. I'm talking from experience, I'm telling you tonight, you know, even as a believer in your life, there are some things, you know, it's ahead, it's ahead, and something will be pushing you, and will tell you not to worry about it. My brother, worry about it, and let us cancel the negative prophecy. And this year will be totally different in your life, in Jesus' name. But you know, in the case of Saul, he didn't worry about it. He didn't take it to heart. He just went on and on and on like that until the fulfillment of the negative prophecy. Let me show you another one. Jeremiah chapter 28. Jeremiah chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 15. Then said the prophet Jeremiah to Ananiah, the prophet, hear now Ananiah, the Lord has not sent thee. For thou makest these people to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. You see, here was a man that styled himself, called himself a prophet. And this prophet had disobeyed the Lord. He had uttered prophecy that was false. 
and Jeremiah came to him. And Jeremiah came with a heavy tidings, bad news. And it was a negative prediction that Jeremiah was telling this man, Ananiah. And then he told him, he said, Ananiah, you have taught rebellion against the Lord. The Lord has not sent you. You have spoken lies in his name. And he said, Ananiah, hear the prophecy, but it's negative. Hear this prophecy, but it's a heavy, heavy message. Hear this prophecy, but the negative prediction is terrible on you. Before the end of the year, you will die. You know, he said of Ananiah, holding that prophet and saying, Jeremiah, pray for me. I'm sorry for my sin. Turn that prophecy, reverse it, change it, cancel it. He just looked at Jeremiah and said, you are joking. He didn't take it very seriously. You know why? Because maybe he knew how to read some Psalms. You know, there are people, because they know how to read two or three Psalms in the Bible, and when they hear that there is a negative prophecy, oh, they say, I'm also a prophet myself. I know how to read the Psalms in the Bible. I know how to pray. I know, how to, instead of seeking for the power that is higher than their own, instead of seeking for the manifestation of miracle power that will destroy and cancel all the works of the enemy, that's what Ananias did. He just shrugged his shoulder. He was careless about it. He was nonchalant about it. He said, well, I don't worry about that. Look at verse 17. So Ananias the prophet died the same year, in the seventh month. You see why we're dealing with this message today? Is that every negative prophecy you have seen in a dream, I want you to recollect them as we're praying today. We're going to cancel everything. Every curse that anybody put upon you. And he said, as long as he's alive, you'll never get married. Don't you know that's a negative prophecy? Your father said, don't worry about it. Your mother said, don't worry about it. Why don't you worry about it? Why don't you cancel it? Why don't you tell the Lord that I will not allow this sin in my life. I'm going to be totally free. But you see, some of the people, they don't worry about such a thing. They just say, well, I don't worry about whatever anybody will say. But you see, Ananiah, that's how he died. Because of that negative prophecy, from all that you are hearing tonight, that means anytime you have a negative dream, deal with it. Anytime you have an, uh, an utterance, from a juju worshipper, or from a herbalist, or from a false prophet, deal with it. Anytime you hear a curse from anyone, deal with it immediately, so that the power of God, the power in the blood of Jesus, will cancel the negative prophecy. Now you see, somebody may not be born again. Somebody may not know the true God in reality, experientially. And yet, God in his mercy may give him a prediction, a foretelling, of what is coming in the future. He may give a dream. It may be that your wife is not born again. And your wife had a dream. And the dream is talking about something negative. Well, you just say, that's what I'm telling you. Go and be born again. Forget about the dream. Why do you tell her to forget? Don't you remember Pilate's wife had a dream? And don't you know that even though Pilate's wife was not a believer, yet the dream was something real. Why don't you take it that that's a negative prophecy? But by the grace of God, we're going to cancel that thing. And if you will cancel it by faith in the energy of the Spirit of God, I believe it will be canceled in Jesus' name. You see, and Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. It was negative. And Daniel said, O king, you are exalted, you are high, you are great, you are a very important personality, and yet look at this negative thing coming before you that they will drive you from the society of men. You will have mental problems. And they will drive you out. You will begin to eat grass like animal. I don't know what Nebuchadnezzar was thinking about. It, maybe he was thinking, how can I have mental problems? It's those who are thinking too much that can have mental problems. What will make me to think? I am the king, the emperor over a great empire. And then that I will uh, not, if somebody who doesn't understand how, how life goes, who is thinking too much, that you have such a problem, Daniel, uh, leave all that alone. I can handle that myself. That I will eat grass. H uh, how can me, a king, how can I eat grass? The, cook, the cooks are there. The food is there. All the riches of the kingdom, they belong to me. Uh, that's, uh, that's another type of talk. Forget about it. He didn't pray about it. Daniel began to counsel him. He said, King, take this one serious. You don't take counseling serious. You don't take the word of God serious. But King, this very time, don't joke with this one. 
Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. O king, we can change this thing. I and my friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can pray for you. And we can break all this thing from your life. If you will take my counsel, and you will, by righteousness, break off your sins, and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lending of thy tranquility. But Nebuchadnezzar did not answer. He felt, well, leave that alone. You know, there are people that feel like that today. You go to them, and they tell you of the negative predictions and prophecies in their lives. Oh, they say, don't worry about that. All this retrenchment did not catch me. All the poverty did not touch me. And I enjoy music. I sleep in the night. And they, we have the family doctor. We have all the things that are available for us. So all those things we are talking about, no, not for poor people who are thinking too much. You don't have anything means to make ends meet. Oh, my friend, it's not like that. You see, that's the way Nebuchadnezzar was thinking. He never did anything about the negative prophecy. What happened then? You see, if there's a negative prophecy and you don't do anything about it, a calamity can result. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was living for men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till the ears were grown like eagles' feathers and his nails like birds' claws. It happened to him. You see, he could have cancelled that thing. How could a man be so foolish to allow that negative prophecy and prediction to have been fulfilled when Daniel that had the excellent spirit was nearby him? When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were walking very close to him, why didn't this man tell them that he wanted all those things to be broken? Why didn't he tell them he wanted them to give him many promises of the Lord? Why didn't he tell them they should be coming to teach him the word of God every time? But the man just went on and he allowed the negative thing to come upon him. I pray that for you. You will not be foolish like that this year in Jesus' name. I'm praying that as any negative prophecy will come your way or come the way of your family, you'll be wise, you'll stand in faith, in authority, and in power, in anointing, and you will break the yoke upon in your life in Jesus' name. Please, turn the cassette over. Now let me show you a king that was very wise. A negative prophecy came, but he was wise. Very wise. He reversed it. He cancelled it. He broke everything. In Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 4. And Jonah began to enter into, his, into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Jonah went into the city of Nineveh. And he uttered a negative prediction. A negative prophecy. A negative statement concerning the whole city. That forty days... Nineveh shall be destroyed. You know, in the case of Saul, he didn't do anything about it. And in the case of Ananiah, he didn't do anything about it. In the case of Nebuchadnezzar, he just went on foolishly until that insanity came upon him. But let's see what this man did, what the king of Nineveh did. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sack clothes from the greatest of them even to the least of them. They proclaimed a fast. Because, you know, there are some types of mountains and problems that will never go away except by prayer and fasting. When an evil spirit had troubled a particular boy from childhood, the, the believers prayed, the disciples prayed, and yet he could, he could not be killed. And when Jesus cured that boy, they asked and said, Why couldn't we do it? And he said, Because of your unbelief. Because if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and depart, and be in the sea, and it shall be so. If you don't doubt in your heart, how be it? In any case, this kind of evil spirit, this kind of problem will not go out except but by prayer and fasting. And so in Nineveh, they proclaimed the fast. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he rose from, he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published, published, published. That means they publicized it through, through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. 
let man and beast be covered with sackcloth clothes and cry mightily unto God. Oh, those people in Nineveh, they knew how to break negative prophecy. They knew how to reverse negative prophecy. Cry mightily unto the Lord. You see, we need to pray. And we need to pray aloud. When somebody has been parent for 23 years and you want to carry, you want that a woman that has been parent for 23 years to carry a baby, you need to pray and cry mightily to God. When some people have been bewitched and the devil and his agents are saying they are going to destroy that individual, you need real praying that will deliver that individual. The people of Nineveh, they knew death was very near. Destruction was very near. Annihilation was very near. And because of that, they said, we're not going to keep quiet. We're going to fast and we're going to pray. We're going to cry mightily unto the Lord. And they began to cry to the Lord. They said, yea, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Verse 10, and the Lord saw their word. Do you know when you have faith in God, the Lord will see your action of faith. Do you know that when you pray, the Lord will see your action of prayer. Do you know that when you are fasting unto the Lord, the Lord, the Lord saw their work, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. In Jeremiah chapter, 20, chapter 18, verses 7 and 8, at what time, at what instance, I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy it. If that nation against whom I pronounce, Turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I sought to do unto them. The Lord says, if there is any negative thing ahead of you, if you will turn from everything that is sinful, and you will call upon the name of the Lord, He says, something new will happen in your life. Something marvelous, miraculous will happen in your life. And I believe that tonight, the power of our mighty God is present here. It's present to heal. It's present to deliver. It's present to save you. And whatever negative prophecy or prediction is before you, everything will be cancelled in Jesus' name. The woman over there, you went to the false prophet, and he told you that you will not be able to live through this particular year. And since that time you have been afraid, the Lord wants me to tell you that right now, as you rise up on your feet and you tell the Lord, I give my life totally to the Lord. The Lord is telling me that you are going to be delivered tonight in Jesus' name. And all that spirit of death and all that prophecy of death is cancelled in your life in Jesus' name. A woman over there, you have, you have been pregnant and in the dream, somebody used a leg to kick your stomach and then told you that you will never deliver. And since that time, pain and moving objects have been happening in your body. The Lord has sent me to tell you tonight that negative thing that somebody said in your life, it is cancelled in Jesus' name. That woman... I have not got married and uh, the person came in the dream and he told you, I am your husband. Don't worry about marriage. Don't worry about marriage. And then you woke up and you told somebody, ah, they told you that I know somebody that had that problem. When it happens like that, you'll never marry. I cancel it right now in Jesus' name. There's a person over there, you're hearing noise in your ear right now. Every time you wake up and you're going here and there, the noise is disturbing you. All the places you have gone. They are telling you that, that thing, that it will never be removed. But the Lord tells me tonight, that negative sin is cancelled in your life in Jesus' name. Why not rise up on your feet, and the Lord will deliver you right now. And say, Lord, here I come. All the negative prophecy, all the evil sin, destroy it for my life. Destroy it for my life. Break it. Destroy it from your life. Break it. Let's reverse the negative prophecies. It's going to be destroyed. This year, Satan will not touch it. This year, no evil will be able to overpower, overcome you. If there is any sin in your life, confess and forsake them. And tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I will not go back to those evil things anymore. Break and destroy and cancel all those negative prophecies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see what the king of Nineveh and all the people of Nineveh did? They turned away from sin. And if there is sin in your life, you have not been born again. You have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. This year, 
God wants you to live a happy, fruitful, prosperous year. And the only thing that can hinder is that if your sin will separate you from the Almighty God. But you know, Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary. So that as you call upon him, and you lay everything down, and you turn away from your sin, I'm telling you that this year, you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And so if there's anything in your life, or you have been a backslider, you have been living in sin, why don't you at this time call upon the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I want to be born again. Lord, I want to be saved. You tell the Lord that he'll wash you clean with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And then every negative prophecy will be destroyed, reversed in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this blessed hour. Oh Lord, I'm asking right now that all your people that are here today, and Lord, they know you because you created them. But they do not know you experientially because they have not been born again. Oh Lord, I'm asking as they ask that they want to be born again, I'm asking that you forgive their sins, change their lives, turn them around so that they will be born again in Jesus' name. Lord, they believe that Jesus died for them on the cross of Calvary. And I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse them. The blood will change them. And their lives will become totally new in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you grant them the assurance of their sins being forgiven. And you give them the power, the authority to go out and live righteous lives and sin no more in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. I want you to just bow your head and close your eyes. Those people that the Lord revealed at the latter part of the message, that the Lord revealed your problem while I was still preaching and rounding up, I want you to raise up your hand now. I'm going to take authority over that evil thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, all these people that are raising their hands up right now, oh Lord, I pray for them. All the negative prophecies, I cancel it in Jesus' name. That lady that uh, the evil power, the evil personality says she'll never get married, I break the relationship. I break the link before them. Lady, you are set free in the mighty power of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I'm asking for that person that had been pregnant and that fellow just uh, used the leg to push the stomach and said she'll not be able to deliver. I cancel that attack and that oppression of the enemy in Jesus' name. That person that has been bothered with noise in the, in the ear. Lord, I pray right now. Those evil spirits, they want to turn that individual man just to go out and be roaming about. You devil, you are a liar. Because when I stand in the name of Jesus, you cannot operate anymore. I cancel your power upon that person right now in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for all these people raising up their hands. I pray, Lord, the negative prophecy will be cancelled in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Let's bow and eyes closed. That young person that is in the cult of the familiar spirits, and you've been there, and they have been telling you that if you ever leave that place, they're going to destroy you. And they have terrified you that if you confess that, you are going to die. Now you know that the power of God operates in the mind of God. And once I pray for you, all those people, there is nothing they can do against you. So I'm waiting for you now to raise up your hand, because this is your time of deliverance. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now. Lord, you said you have given me power and authority over the powers, over all the power of the enemy, that I shall tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by enemies hurt your people. Therefore, right now, I take all these people out of the hands of the evil ones, out of the agents of Satan. I break all the yoke, all the link between them and the evil powers in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray in the day and in the night they will be totally set free. And they will not suffer any injury from any of those spirits in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. As bad and eyes closed, a woman over there, you have got married now. But do you remember, woman, many years ago you had a covenant that you'll never deliver a child. Maybe you've forgotten it, but now you've been running about looking for child. 
And many, many years ago, you got into a covenant. You said, you'll never have a child. Eventually, you got married. Heads bowed, eyes closed. That woman, if you raise up your hand right now, I'll break that covenant. And then this year, you can go ahead and have your baby. Father, in the name of Jesus, that covenant, I break it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, didn't you tell me whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven? Didn't you assure me whatever I lose on earth is loosed in heaven? All that yoke of the devil, all that covenant with the enemy, right here this moment, I break everything in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray you touch them right now. And they can go ahead now with their husbands. They can have their children this very year in Jesus' name. I pray as well that baby will be normal. Nothing will touch that baby. And as you deliver that baby, you'll be healthy. The baby will be healthy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know you've done it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I have a number of people here tonight. And you know it. That there's been that thing. You think it was just a bad thought. Hunting you all about. But it shows you that the thing is passing in your mind and it's about a negative prediction. And that thing has been following you all about. Every time that something is about to happen, you remember that you will never be able to make it because of that negative prophecy upon your life. It follows you like your shadow. And as you are preaching tonight, you are saying, but I want to be free. I congratulate you that you are here tonight. And you can celebrate. You have the funeral ceremony for your problem. We bury your problem. We'll forget about it today. And as you raise up your hand, I'll be praying for you. So that that thing that is haunting you, that is following after you, everything will be removed right now. And you'll be totally set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, the people of Nineveh were very many. 120,000. In a single moment, you answered their prayer. They prayed with united faith and fasting. They cried mightily unto you. You didn't say there were too many. You answered their prayer. And therefore all these people that are raising up their hands right now. Oh Lord, I take authority over their problem. All those evil powers that are haunting them. That person over there that says, But I was sanctified and yet the thing kept on haunting after me. What will I do again? Don't worry about it anymore. Tonight is the end of the problem. Oh Lord, I'm asking right now, you break that yoke, you destroy that thing, and reverse that negative prediction in Jesus' name. That person that was in Cherubim and Seraphim church before. And then the prophet told you, you will come back. You will come back. Oh, you said, no, I've been born again now. I will never come back. And recently, all that that false prophet told you, you have begun to see all those things in your life. Right now, I break that power. I destroy that negative prophecy. And I pray that you are delivered in Jesus' name. That woman that the Abbalists wanted to marry you. But then you said, no, I will not marry somebody who married before. And then they put a curse upon you. And since that time, you've been carrying it about with like a heavy load on your neck. I lift up that load right now. I cancel that thing right now in Jesus' name. That person there, when your, uh, when your parent was going to die, then the parent called you and said because of this, this, and this that he had against you, then he said something negative. You didn't worry about it at that time. You are too young to understand. But now the thing I've been following you about, a, a person is gone already, the person is dead already. And the thing is left behind, you are carrying it about today. Right now, I break that thing. I destroy that thing. Oh Lord, I pray you set that individual free in Jesus' name. Lord, all these hands that are raised up, I pray that they'll never be the same again. That the yoke of the devil, the power of the enemy, is broken tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. That woman that had been having miscarriages, all along, if you just raise up your hand right now, this year, no miscarriage, you'll have your own child. Father, in the name of Jesus, that thing that has been causing the miscarriage, whatever the doctors call it, I break it, I destroy it. And I pray that you set your people free right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. If you are barren and you want children for this year, Stand upon the promises of the Lord. Miracle child is on the way. I want everybody to say, Miracle child is on the way. Say it again, Miracle child is on the way. Say it again, Miracle child is on the way. Heavenly Father, I'm asking you honor the face of your people. 
You said your people will not seek you in vain. They will not call upon you in vain. And I pray for them right now, O oh Lord, I pray that you open the windows of heaven. O oh Lord, is anything too hard for you to do? The people that the doctors have written up, can't you surprise the doctors? A year of joy and jubilation. For all these people that are raising up their hands now, O oh Lord, I am asking, you'll give them a surprise packet in Jesus' name. I pray that whatever is the root cause of the barrenness, you'll take everything away. And Lord, I pray, you'll touch the body of the husband. You'll touch the body of the wife. You'll change everything that needs to be changed, and they will have children in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, according to your word, I tell your people that before the year runs out, they'll carry their babies in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Now, whatever miracle you need, the God of miracles is here tonight. And he will wipe away all those tears in your eyes. Our God is the wonderful God. That family that is about to break up, the Lord wants to assure you that or even though that man or that woman may be saying, hey, I'm going to break everything, and you are sorrowful, you are absent-minded. In fact, while I was preaching, you didn't hear everything I said. Yet your mind will go here and go there because of that trouble in the family. The Lord tells me to tell you, see that he's taking care of the situation already. Whatever miracle you need, whatever miracle you need, I want you to raise up your hand. Today is miracle day. Almighty God, I thank you. Oh God, I will love you because of your mighty power. I will love you because you will never disappoint your own. I pray, oh Lord, right now, all the people that are sick in their body, that right now, your spirit will pass through here. The healing virtue will flow through here. And you will touch their bodies, and they will be well in Jesus' name. I'm asking right now for the people that have diabetes. Oh Lord, I pray, the diabetes will fly away from their bodies in Jesus' name. People that are raising up their hands, they have tuberculosis. That cough, that coughing of blood, I stop it right now. Come out in Jesus' name. The person with the brain damage and the brain problem, I pray right now. That miracle like cooling water will enter into your brain, enter into your mind. And everything will be finished now today in Jesus' name. That person that has a heart condition over there, I pray. The mighty power of God will remove your heart condition. You will be well right now in Jesus' name. I'm asking, O oh Lord, for the people that are raising up their hands because last year was hard. No food to eat. Not enough, no good accommodation, and they, there was no work, and they are saying, Lord, this year has come again. Oh, Lord, I pray, this year will be different. And I pray you will provide for their need in Jesus' name. I pray for that person that is feeling like fire all over the body. I command that fire will come out of your body right now in Jesus' name. I pray for that person, you woke up in the morning, you saw all the scratches of, on your body. I command right now, the oppression of the devil will get away from your family in Jesus' name. I'm asking for that little child, the infant child, uh, will be crying so terribly. That the parents are so worried, they never sleep in the night. I pray right now, the cooling water from heaven will come upon the body and the mind of that child. And everything will be changed in Jesus' name. I pray that whatever miracle your people are asking for, oh Lord, tonight is great miracle night. And I pray you give it unto them in Jesus' name. The people that are lame, I challenge you right now that the power of the Almighty God will get into your bone, will get into your ankle, will get into your body. You'll get up and walk in Jesus' name. That deaf spirit, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That dumb spirit, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That blindness, I command you, you open your eyes, you will see Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for all your people, your miracle hand will touch them. Your miracle power will come upon them. Do good for your people in Jesus' name. Right now, begin to manifest the miracle upon their body. Miracle upon their families. Miracle in their, in their working places. Oh Lord, the people that struggled for promotion last year, but there was no promotion. I pray that right now, the promotion process will begin in their life in Jesus' name. Now, person that has been afraid of walking, of uh, going about in the night or doing anything in the evening, I pray right now that fear in your life will be broken in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.